This video is the last one in our series and it's on exponential decay. It makes sense to have watched the previous video about exponential growth because we go through a lot of the same similar types of concepts. So as we mentioned here that we're building on the skills that we've developed already and solving problems about decay functions for exponentials. And what skills have we got already? We've already worked on table of values, graphing, uh, by hand doing sketches and using the graphics calculator, the X calc and Y calculation when you're trying to find the value of the other variable, interpreting the A and the B in this, which is the general form for an exponential equation. So remembering they're the ones that go growth is like this and decay is like this and then solving equations, both algebraically, using solver on our Casio graphics calculators, using graph, lots of different techniques. The one example we're going to work through here. When a diesel electric generator is switched off, the current dies away according to the formula of this, that I is equal to 24 multiplied by 0.25 or a quarter to the power of T amps, where T is the time in seconds after the power is cut, so it's turned off. So how many amps are still running through that generator? And so here are the questions that we're going to answer. So this is the formula that we need to work with. Firstly, we're asked what current flowed in the gen generator at the instant it was switched off. So there's still obviously current in there. And what is that T equivalent? So we have to substitute in a variable. So when the generator was switched off, zero seconds have passed. And so we're going to substitute in T is equal to zero. A reminder that the equation that we're working with is I is equal to 24 multiplied by 0.25 to the power of T. So we're going to substitute in 0 where we see a T and then you can work that out. You can type this whole equation into graph mode if you like, putting I where it's Y1 and, and then graphing that and seeing what that looks like at when T is equal to 0. Or you can put that in your run mode and the value that we get for that is 24, as you can see here, written out neatly. And these are worded problems, so it's really great to answer with a sentence, with words as well. So when the generator was switched off, so how many amps, what was, sorry, what was the current that flowed? 24 amps of current flowed in the circuit. So that's putting it into context. When you're asked to solve for capital I, for these very, uh, different T values, T is equal to one, two, and three. What was T again? It was number of seconds. So the different seconds that have gone by. What we're going to do is we're going to substitute in the different values of t, so it's probably best to write out what you're doing at the time. So when t is equal to 1, what is i equal to? Write out what it is. I always say to my students, write down on your page what it is that you type into your calculator, and then you would work out the answer to that. Anything to the power of 1 is 1, and then 24 multiplied by 0.25 gives us 6. So it's 6 amps when t is equal to 1 second, what are the other ones? Got them worked out neatly for us here. 6 amps, 1.5 amps, and 0.375 amps. What's different each time? Noticing that we've substituted in a T value uh, to the power there, 1, 2, and 3. And it's really great to write out what it is you're doing. When T is equal to 2. When T is equal to 3 to say what you're doing. Uh, and putting the units there each time, the number of amps. Noticing that it's decreasing quite quickly and obviously we're hoping to head down to zero amps running through that generator and that's getting close to that isn't it after three seconds so we say it's this is called a decay function this type of decrease that we're talking about because the graph that we're going to get to looks like this we then ask to graph i against t so i against t means i is the y equivalent and t is the x using the information above. So think about the values that we found. We found when t is equal to 1, 2, and 3. And the answers we got for those were 6, 1.5, and 0 0.375. So that they are our i values. So thinking about the scale here, our x scale here, and our y, well, I should call them by their real letters, shouldn't I? i and t. I'm just going to do a quick sketch and then show you it neatly. Thinking about how you might paste this out, obviously using a ruler and graph paper, all of that sort of thing, thinking of the scale like this. And then what's the highest value that we've got? I, we've got, well, what was it when we started though? At t is equal to zero, that's the other one that we need to put on. That was 24, wasn't it? So that's where we need to make sure we started. So maybe you might go up in multiples of five, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, just giving you a rough idea of what this is going to look like. And then substituting the other numbers when t is one, 
i is 6. So it's really dropped down really fast. When t is 2, i is 1.5, really small. So you can imagine what's happening here, making it have a curve as much as possible, certainly not straight lines, but here's one drawn more neatly. And as you can see, the different values, that you can see the dots on the graph there at 1, 2, and 3. I think I might have drawn my 6 below my 5, did I? Doesn't matter. Using your graphics calculator to do that and making sure you change your view window, you don't really need any of the uh, negative region here. We're just all in the positive region. So setting your view window appropriately. And the last part of the question, using your graph or technology, find how long it takes to reach 4 amps. So what we're doing there is, uh, which variable are we solving for? 4 amps, is that the I or the T? Well, that's not time, so it must be the I one. So we're solving for I. Now, the note down here, remember in our graphics calculators, Casio's, we've got the G solve option, that we're trying to find the X value, and therefore we have a Y value. So we're using X calc, so we're calculating the X value, and that's going to ask us for the Y value of 4. And the answer for that it will give you back, as you can see on the graph here, is 1.29. I just want to remind you of all the other options that you've got to solve a question like this. So this is using graph and G-solve. We've also got using the graph here. This particular graph has it where you might be able to see it on the screen here. They have put in Y2 is equal to 4. So that's the whole straight line at 4. And then it finds the intersection point of those two graphs. And as you can see, Y is 4, so 4 amps after 1.29 seconds. But what about algebraically? You go back to the formula, which was I is equal to 24 multiplied by 0 0.25 to the power of T. And we want 4 for I. So we can write this uh, in this way, 0 0.25 to the power of T and putting 4. Look, there's really no reason why I had to put 4 on the right-hand side. It's just a, I'm a creature of habit here. We absolutely could have put it there on the left. And to solve that, you would need to go into your... Uh, equation menu and to solver, I might just write that there, uh, so it's equation menu and solver and we worked through that in a previous video and making sure you put your equal sign in and then it would solve it for you. So there are multiple ways of solving a question like that. You might like to do it in a couple of ways to double check that you're getting the same answer each time. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. These are the questions to do now which match. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you found this video useful. Thank you for joining me.